Hello, everyone, and welcome to Table Takes presented by Gen Con. Lovely to see you all on this November Friday. It's the month of November. Uh, it's almost 2022 here. Don't say that. Oh, oh, flying, just relax. Flying by. <laughs> no, let's not do this. The weirdest to me is fairly soon it's going to be 2025 and for some reason that's just the weirdest number like that doesn't seem like a real number we're skipping some be. some timelines right now oh. <laughs> skipping some. Oh. i know i know <laughs> all right uh we're gonna talk about board games and stuff today but before we do that let's say hello hello lovely host to everyone here and see what everyone is up to hello lovely uh, host <laughs> Hello, lovely host. <laughs> no, that's you. People are saying oh. you. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> Bonsai, uh, what's, what's up with you? What have you been up to lately? So I don't know if you've heard about this new game called Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's a thing, and uh, if anybody needs tomatoes, I have tomatoes, but also Leafy! All right, I have an agenda against Leafy. Why wasn't it Leafy immediately on my island if you're going to give me these updates about cooking and then not provide me the things to cook with <laughs> or plant? I have a problem with this Nintendo also. it's. Yeah. I also love that you call him Leafy. I, I love that you, <laughs> you call is him... It not, is it not Leafy? That's how it's pretty, right? It's just Leaf. Like a leaf. leaf. Well, I nicknamed or leaf. Leafy now. <laughs> or leaf. <laughs> if you're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I leaf you Erickson. Leafy. Um, Leafy's good. I like leaf. Leafy. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to be in your island uh, five minutes, <laughs> five seconds after this episode ends. So <laughs> tomatoes. Because I have a bunch of recipes and it's like, all you need is tomatoes. All you need is flour for so many of my recipes. Mm. Which is like, great, give me some flour. You, you dorks. So. So, you, so, you, it, uh, so is it like with the fruit trees where you have to go around to different people's islands and people will get different types of seeds? So you got to... Yeah. Um, it's like, well, now they have, they brought Cappy the Kappa, uh, back who I love, uh, he's a Kappa. Um, but for all of you Westerners who don't know what a Kappa is, he's like a turtle monster man. Um, and, uh, he can take you to other islands and on other islands, they have different kinds of like stuff so you can go and you can get different stuff from different islands and bring it back but not everybody gets the same stuff okay so if you have friends like bonsai <laughs> you can go to bonsai's island tomatoes. everybody go to bonsai's islands all tomatoes <laughs> how many how many different foods are there um uh, like crops are there a lot are there like three or are there more than three i think there's, there's five like okay sugar cane uh -huh. wheat uh -huh. potatoes tomatoes uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, right. I don't know what the last one is. <laughs> yeah, if anyone in the chat can uh, yeah, like this, if the there's anything. One. Okay, now carrots. Carrots. carrots, 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 okay. oh, okay. carrots. Okay, carrots. All right, the that's Kappa what I said. thing makes so much more sense too, because people were talking about the kappa and the turtle, and everyone's like, "Oh, well, everyone knows what this mythological creature is." I'm like, "I don't know what this <laughs> is, but it's from Animal Crossing." Okay. <laughs> He's I want my own. I want my own little uh, Kappa, like, turtle plushie to go along with Tortellini back there. So he has a little mm. turtle oh, friend. Turtle because, friend. you know, I love turtles. <laughs> <laughs> if you look up Kappas, K-A-P-P-A, they're mythological Japanese uh, uh, oh. creatures. Um, mm -hmm. don't, don't look too into them because uh, they are mischievous sometimes in a sexual way. Oh, um, so. <laughs> I didn't know that at all. Yeah, there's, there's, yep. Yeah. I they can tell because they have a ball. They like That's to grab them. For you. Stuff, no, well, no, this is history. Like fairy oh. tales and mythological creatures used to be real weird. I mean, yeah. like the um, like the old gnomes would pee on you. Like it's all like it's <laughs> it's not sanitized at all. Historical people were like, wild. we need to reject <laughs> modernity and return to tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Where everything killed you. Every mythical creature wanted to kill you, just yeah. straight up. They're like, yeah. you're human, like, die. Eat your children and wear your face. And, oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, on that note, Isabella, anything else other than uh, island goodness that has been filling your life with joy? These days? Uh, no, none of it. 
Um, I've only been animal crossing. Um, mm-hmm. I've only been crossing my animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I want to talk about, um, for, um, the next, uh, eight years. That's all I yeah. want to talk about. <laughs> um, it's been great. I, I got, um, potatoes, um, on my Island. So if you need potatoes, holler at your girl. Um, and so, uh, it's been great. I've been just demolishing everything that I've built over the past year to start anew. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, yes, it's great. It's, it's, uh, great. It's the only thing I have to look forward to in life. So oh. <laughs> what, about the, no. what about us? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're here for All you. Right. <laughs> Now that Halloween is over, right? Like the season, mm-hmm. there's, there's nothing to look forward well, to. So. The thing though about Halloween is that like Halloween is for the rest of y'all. Y'all, Halloween mm-hmm. is my period of rest. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the time where like I can just wow. be like in my element and everything is like very normal looking, you know. Uh it's where you guys pretend to to be on my wavelength, you know. And so <laughs> after after Halloween ends, that's when I'm like, that's when I'm back in in my spooky element because uh, I'm spooky year round. Um, and so I take it, I take my time off on Halloween. It's my vacation time. Mm. So I'm back to being spooky full time. I okay. So I played a fair amount of Animal Crossing, but when I first heard about it, I knew nothing about it. I was thinking like crossing guards and it was about like animals <laughs> crossing the street and yeah. you were like helping them or something. So it's still a little piece of my brain that always thinks about that. That's part of it. That's not what it is though. <laughs> I mean, they do cross streets. You can make them cross each other. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought too. So you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's very and you common. can signal them in the new game. You can follow along and they, oh. They also have, did you see that they have like a cross guard little thing that's, uh, that says walk or don't walk on it? Did mm-hmm. you see that? Yeah. They got the new lights. <laughs> they the new light. Too much nook miles, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And before we get into the news proper, Javion is back here with us today. Yay! Uh, Yay! Just hello. Hi. Wow. How goes it? <laughs> I'm happy to be back. I'm always happy to see you guys. And I'm always happy that when I get a chance to, you know, talk about my favorite things board games um sorry to break with the uh animal crossing train here but um i just don't play as much as you guys i guess (laughs) i haven't been playing a lot of that i've been playing a lot of card survival um this (laughs) me and emma have been kind of obsessed with uh, surviving on an island in this early access it's a steam game uh, where you just like play cards and it's really frustrating and they keep uh, updating it and it just gets harder and harder <laughs> what day are you at in your recent season? oh i you know i just keep resetting and i just keep yeah. starting over i think the longest i ever got to was like 35 days before i died of malnutrition <laughs> yeah. I, i'm at day 60 though so. oh what yeah <laughs> man i'm surprised you haven't like, gotten a raft off the island yet <laughs> no, I'm 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 tucked in. I made my hut. I got my stove. I got partridges in my coop. So oh, I'm, I'm dang. like settled in. I'm just like I'm not leaving this island. This island's great. This is like it's peaceful. I swim. It's lovely. I'm so island jealous. life. It's all about that. Okay, well you got to give me Ooh. some tips then. On how I can okay. get better. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give you all the tips. All right. Uh, enough about us. We are going to the news. Wait, news. Emma, what's been going on with you? Oh. Um, playing all of these games except for more Stardew Valley than Animal Crossing. Oh. I got hooked again. Uh, it's very, um, yeah, Stardew Valley. I play it with like a laptop because I like play for five minutes and then I'm like, okay, I'm I'm at eight hearts with Shane, so I need to be in Cinder Sap Forest between eight a.m. and three p.m. <laughs> uh, and I play for five minutes. Like I'm at six hearts with Penny, so in order to see her, because my goal is to see every every um clip from every relationship with everyone and they all happen at different times in different places so you have to keep giving them gifts and you have to be in the right place at the right time and then i'm going to give them all bouquets and start dating all of them i guess technically <laughs> uh and then you have an excel sheet for all your friends yeah yeah <laughs> doesn't everyone yeah uh, and then 
you have you romance all of them and you get they all fall in love with you and then you pick one of them so that's that's great right just like real life sounds awesome (laughs) um yeah and i'm also working really hard on board games so doing a lot of play testing uh yeah and it's exciting and fun uh, yeah, now on to board game news. Uh, although specifically the first news item that we have on the list is games in general, so not just board games. A little sad, so buckle in, folks, because PAX South has been canceled. Uh, for those of, you, those of you who might not know, PAX South is a convention, part of the PAX family, Penny Arcade Expo family of conventions. This one was specifically in... Uh, was it San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Texas, uh, in mm. Texas. So they have the PAX East, PAX West, uh, San Antonio. Yeah. Um, yes. It says here, I did not read the agenda. Thank you. Uh, yeah. San Antonio, uh, started in 2015. I actually went there. I think it was in 2016 that I went. So I went to PAX South once. It was kind of nice because it was definitely smaller than the other PAXs I had been to, but it was, it was chill and there was a lot of fun. There's a big board game area there Uh, a lot of my board game friends have gotten into the specific board game expo before they had packs unplugged they had this big expo at pack south for board games um but yeah i think and we can discuss this a little bit but i've seen packs struggle a little bit and you all who've attended pax west have seen packs struggle a little bit with um the the covid you know many conventions and in-person events have struggled uh and you know pax has done some really great stuff like requiring vaccinations they were one of the first conventions to require that everyone was vaccinated um so doing good stuff but kind of struggling a little bit to maintain that still that um just air of wonder and like hey you can see all the new games here it's just it's a trying times for conventions i mean i'm kind of bummed by this because of the fact that like well okay i'm kind of bummed for the people of the region one is i've always been surprised that they put it in san antonio which is not really a very big city san antonio Mm -hmm. um one of the bigger cities might be like austin would be cool or like dallas or houston Mm -hmm. um san antonio is like in the southern part of the state it's it's not one of the bigger it's not i mean it's it's a, a big city for texas but like you know you could have a huge thing in Houston. I think it would be much bigger. They put it there. Also, now that there's no packs in the South, like there's nothing outside of Seattle and Boston. And most people in that region, I don't think are going to be traveling to Boston or Seattle. Um, uh, that's a really long ways away. And I think it was really nice to have something that, that was that close for a lot of people in the South, uh, to yeah. be able to go to. I honestly don't think this is going to be the end. I think that PAX South or PAX Southern, maybe they move it to, I saw a couple of people talking about them moving it to Vegas. Um, mm. I saw a couple of people talking about having something like this in, uh, Florida and like Orlando or something like that, you know? And so I think that like the, there needs to be something in the South, but also I think that there's also an opportunity for other indie, uh, companies to other indie conventions to kind of pop up, even though PAX is really not a convention. I feel like we, we really need to, to stress that PAX Mm -hmm. is like a conference. It's like a, it's like where you can go and you can like, uh, sample stuff, demo stuff. It's really, PAX is like really much more of like a, we're here to sell you our new gaming systems, games. You can demo stuff. You can meet with other people. Mm. It's like a convention is kind of, even though PAX West does feel like any other convention, um, uh, I, it's much more like a gaming demo kind of a work you know, thing, but, um, yeah, I think that they, they need something else and maybe something indie, um, uh, not saying that, you know, the, the read pop overlords, um, I shouldn't have their hands. Uh, we praise, uh, you, read pop <laughs> overlords. um, I would still like to go to your conventions. So please yeah, don't blacklist there. me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, you know, for the region, 
it was it was good and i just i feel like they need something going on in, in the in the south of the americas i did i kind of like to be in san antonio though san antonio oh. is it's kind of a cute city you know it's like um got the river walk and some nice here i just had a thought though mm-hmm. I, um this isn't this is wild speculation so let's put on our wild speculation hat <laughs> oh oh do I need my tin hat? Uh, <laughs> let me say i have it right here i do wild <laughs> speculation hat. i keep it here now so pax is as i speculation. just i mentioned that pax is one of the first speech. conventions to require covid vaccinations hmm. and texas is having some problems with that right now so i wonder if pax said we're going to require vaccinations and like texas had an issue with that that's very interesting yeah it's, it's that might concern that is yeah. i mean they did specify it was like covid like just due to covid but i think that's also a combination of like hey it's still by the way if you haven't gotten vaccinated yet please do or get your booster shot also flu shots mm-hmm. just you know get, get this for, for your health I, uh, I I would not be, be surprised by that. I mean, Texas yeah. is really giving people hell for their um, COVID and vaccination requirements. Um, I've seen what they're doing in schools and things like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if Reed Pop, uh, if Pax was like, y'all are not worth the the drama. And maybe when you guys can get your stuff together, we'll return. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised because for them to cancel the con yeah, like, yeah. In under a year, I mean, that to me is like so severe. It doesn't feel like it's just related to the low numbers of COVID. I feel like it's an, a larger issue. I have no, no basis for that. Though. I have no facts. It's just brainwaves. Brainwaves. But yeah, yeah. this is just yeah. Then again, don't <laughs> I know we're supposed to do news, like we probably shouldn't wildly speculate, but this is speculations. Yeah. We have our tin hats on. Like, that's, spicy. <laughs> that's like Texas, get your action to gear. Yeah, true. <laughs> like, come on. Uh all right, moving on. Uh snaky stuff. Bonza, tell Snake us some, some snicks. Let's talk about the snicks. <laughs> all right. I don't know if you uh anybody in the audience remembers or in chat. Uh, a few couple, like maybe a month ago, we talked about the golden cobra challenge. Uh basically it's a free form uh LARP that started in Gen Con. It's a competition to like, hey, uh, we want free for like so what i mean by free form larp is a, a larp that anybody can pick up and play without having a lot of people needing to set up because when you do a lot of larping uh experiences or live action role play uh you have to get sets and have everybody in character and know all the background lore of the story it's just a lot of massive effort and work goes to it um this golden cobra challenge is all about making it so anybody can pick it up with a minimal amount of resources or no resources or all it's just like a hey this is a one page thing of what you need and how the world works and pick it up uh this year uh they so they come in with different challenges that they call ingredients for their larping campaigns this year they had three different uh requirements one of course uh being pandemic friendly Uh, But the other two uh, options for uh, the ingredients you needed to uh, do is minority religious groups or minority religious experiences and however you interpret that being, it's just always up for interpretation. Uh, And the other one was committee theme. So like you are to have to be in a small group of a committee or union or a, you know, a housing organization or some sort, like however you view uh, committee is how it was interpreted. Uh, They had about uh, six uh, winners and several more honorable mentions of, um, we're not too sure what happened, at least mine. There was talk about having a most accepts, uh, accessible and inclusive design, but I feel like because of it also needing to be pandemic friendly, um, it's just, it, it will be inclusive because it can be somebody, you don't have to be there physically. You can play remotely and stuff like that. So I think it's just all these games were accessible, inclusive, so they couldn't choose the best because they all are. And Mm. so that was like a really cool thing, at least to me. I'm just speculating. Not facts. (laughs) Not facts. Just (laughs) speculating on that one. I mean, that would be Um, awesome, though. It's like, well, we can't give a most accessible and inclusive award because everybody was 100% accessible and inclusive. Like, that's a cool world, right? (laughs) 
Yeah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just tell two of the 2021 winners uh, that I really liked. But if, if anybody else in chat wants to see the other winners, uh, there is a link in uh, the chat right now. One of the winners that was, was Crypt Kick Kickers. Uh, you ever remember the uh, the Monster Mash? The Monster Mash. Yeah. It's a great yeah, smash. Yeah. Well, you role play as like the great grandchildren of all of these monsters trying to get the monsters together uh, to do another Monster Mash. But of course, there's like internal family politics that are going on and who's really like what the Igors are now farther separated. So there's like more internal struggles and nobody really wants to get together because the monster mash was the last time all the monsters mashed together. And then I guess drama happened afterwards and nobody wants to talk about it. But in fact, about the monster mash, it is a song about a song. We never hear the song, the monster mash. We just know that the song is about other monsters doing the monster mash. We never actually know what the song, the monster mash is. It's a song about the song monster mash. Okay. Just anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so that it's just, you're trying to resolve hidden agendas and have this monster mash again. Uh, and the second one, it really reminds me of the venture, uh, one of the venture Brenner episodes it's hench. Union LARP. Uh, basically, you're a bunch of henchmen uh, and you want to negotiate with your supervillain to obtain a union contract. And, you know, you got to no negotiate, be like, all right, hey, I know. How about we get like one free day off per like world destruction ray kind of thing? What's the health requirements? Do we get insurance in case like a uh, hero comes in and shoots us? So that's that's the other one. I love there. that idea. That's right. so silly. You're raising up comrades. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, <laughs> raise comrades. Getting people to role play in a union practice, right? This is great. Yeah. <laughs> As the boss sweats in the corner, like this is a game, right? You guys are having fun. Yeah, it's like, role playing. Just, that sounds yeah. so cool. I'm put. I'm. I'm making that my New Year's resolution. I want to do some LARPs next year, if, <laughs> especially if there's like LARPs like these. I didn't even know about these. This is so cool. Dave, oh, yeah, too. I want to get into LARPs. Yes, I, I've never done it before. So we, okay. Oh, they're fine. Yeah, I think yeah. we talked about this with Isabella too. It's just like just yeah. Okay, then all we just have to start our own LARP, all four of us. Yes, we, yes. we can invite Noir and Monique and even Derek. Yeah. Like, yeah. Next I Gen Con, we're all going to LARP together on yeah. camera. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Table takes on LARP. location. So we go to a place and we like yeah. stay there for a couple of days. I'm that sounds so I'm cool. Just putting it out into the universe. So. I'm, so, I'm so excited. Uh, um, but yeah, so. Uh, you can go ahead and look at other the other uh, four winners as well. Like I said, there's six winners. And yeah, uh, it was presented on October 29th during the Meto uh metotopia which is on online this year so look forward to all the larp views all right larping love it uh space the final frontier Javion, what what new horizons have we crossed in our travels uh through the cosmos well, <laughs> games workshop had warhammer day recently um i believe it was around uh, halloween so it was actually just last weekend and they announced a bunch of new things new models and even uh a, not really a new game but more like a game that used to be that they're kind of bringing back like a like a reboot of an old game that they had so um on warhammer day they announced a bunch of these different models and i'm really quickly gonna just list through some of the announcements that were made and give my like you know a surface level thoughts on them because I don't know, nobody asked and I decided I, I wanted to. Um, <laughs> so Warhammer 40k Shadow Throne um, looks like a, a very rogue like character wearing this like scarf, very edgy uh, cyberpunk dude, looks pretty cool. Um, we've also got Age of Sigmar, the maggotkin of Nurgle, uh, a very big boy wearing, uh, uh, who he's got a big scythe, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very about big boys in, in, in Age of Sigmar, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, uh, Warhammer Warcry, um, they've got this barbarian-looking person uh, with long, flowing orange locks. Looks really cool. Um, oh, uh, Warhammer Underworlds, Harrow Deep. They've got the Black Powders Buccaneers, this dwarf-looking dude with this giant, like, iron belly armor protecting the most sensitive spot of a dwarf, the big belly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and um, the Horus Heresy is getting. Oh, I don't. Oh, okay, I don't want to try to say this, but I'm gonna try. Jagatai, I think. Jagatai Khan with his big ponytail. Come on through. Um, oh, and finally, of course, we've got the game that they announced, Dungeon Bowl. Mm. So back in eight, 1989, Elves, Dwarves, and Dungeon Bowl was this game that m- made a sort of mashup of a fantasy football game and a dungeon crawler. You may know it that now as Blood Bowl. Well, Dungeon Bowl is the sort of Games Workshop's uh, respawning of the old, old, old type of um, Blood Bowl. So it, it's got like updated rules sets for um, for more Warhammer focused uh, gameplay, and um, it's it's actually got some really cool mechanics to it. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, get one point. All you need is one point, and you win the game. But to get a point, first you have to go into a dungeon and find the chest, while also fighting off a ton of different monsters and traps. There's magical teleportation portals. There's dungeon challenges. Um, and also, you are there's lots of magic involved. You choose from diff- eight different colleges of magic where you're draw- drawing um, different abilities from whenever you're while you're constructing your team. Because part of the fantasy football in fantasy world experience is putting together your team. So. Mm-hmm. I think this looks pretty cool. I think fans of um, of Blood Bowl and Warhammer are going to be really excited about this. Um, I, I heard War- Warhammer Day was really exciting, uh, a rousing success. And putting it on Halloween, a lot of people expected it to be a little bit more like like Halloween-themed stuff. Um, so I guess they didn't really go for that direction this time around. But all the stuff that they put out looks really, really cool. I think people are going to have a lot of fun painting this stuff. Yeah, and click on the link because uh, David is not lying when he says it's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big boy. Uh, yeah, cool. The I, I think it's cool. Just the creativity in the models continues to soar, and there's a lot of different games within the Warhammer um, umbrella. Like this link has five different types of games, so definitely check that out if you're excited about minis games. Uh, now we're Treading down a different path, Bonsai, if you have some uh, interesting language news for us, terminology. Yes, I do. So as we go more and more uh, through things and as like during the past two, well, really year or so, a lot of game systems have been changing their language, have been hiring consultants, have been trying to improve uh, their community that they're in and stepping away from very uh, terrible, like kind of cognitive connotations that may be associated with how they, the terms that they use and how they describe their like individual race characters and such like that. Uh, So Pathfinder is also taking that step uh, as well, uh, removing uh, the term phylactery. Um, If you don't play Pathfinder or you haven't played Pathfinder before, the term phylactery mostly refers uh, in before, like not the history, but like in the game setting, uh, the liches used to carry their souls around um, in what they used to call phylacteries. The actual like term itself uh, is an old Jewish Greek term, uh, mostly used by the Greek to refer to a Jewish person uh, who like a, like a, an object that they would carry around, which is a small wooden box uh, that would carry certain patches, passes of the Torah in. Um, modern Jewish folk do not use that term anymore. They use like something else or neither use the tool, uh, but they want to combat anti-Semitic uh, views, especially because liches are a purely evil uh, mm. creature in the Pathfinder universe. So they wanted to go ahead and separate that. So they're changing that word to soul cages. And that is where the liches will be storing their soul. Now it's going to be just soul cages, which is like a very, like, it's not a fancy sounding cool name, but it, it, it is what it is. It is the point, but I like that they are trying to separate from having like negative connotations, especially because it is a real religious term, um, in the past, and so they're just trying to combat that before it actually, like, you know, yeah. really, really becomes a problem. It sounds like they're just trying to get ahead of something before it becomes an issue, which I think is really smart. And I think that 
a lot of companies kind of are probably quietly editing mm-hmm. their language yeah. <laughs> to to not become a, a thing in the future, which is very smart. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a, historically in fiction um, stories, novels, like people would take words from other languages because it's a lot of work making up all your words. So you're like, this is a cool sounding word from this language. This sounds weird. You know, this is like putting a Western lens and just like chick picking a word for something is like, this is kind of like this it's, it's stealing, you know, they just like yeah. stole words from other languages. And well, I think that's, that's where the problem is. You yeah. know, it's like, if you hear something with your, your Western views and you say, Oh, that's, that's a, that's a funky little word. What's that? Yeah. It's like, yeah. What's that okay, weird? But like, it's like, ooh. You're, you're, <laughs> you're not looking at like what the word means to the people that actually use it. Um, yeah. and it's, you know, it's appropriative language. And then yeah. when those people that you probably never considered before start playing the game, <laughs> um, and they figure <laughs> out like, actually <laughs> this is our word and this is how we use it. And it's not okay. Yeah. That's where the problem lies. And so I think that, you know, a lot of people, we're starting to get away from that whole thing of like, you know, oh, wow, this is a weird culture. This is a weird word. This is a weird food. And using that for your, for your fictional games, um, we're starting to move away from that as culture. Just make up, make up words. We make, yeah. we make up words all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so use yeah. your creativity, put some yeah. effort into it, you know? Yeah. It seems like a small change, but it's really mm-hmm. impactful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the little things that we can do to make our games mm-hmm. better, I think, yeah, just accept it and move on, you know? Yeah. yeah, 100%. All right. In another little bit of Games Workshop news, one of the things previewed was a Christmas a Christmas-themed miniature. So Dered Gabo is here to lead the Christmas revolution uh, with a new miniature and it's, I don't, I'm going to post a link to it. I don't have a lot oh. to say or someone else can post a link. If I'll post it because you're talking it. about right. it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know much to say about it, but it's cute. And the, the, um, it's, it's a, it's a goblin riding on the, the squig. I think it is. Mm-hmm. Derek's is so mad at me right now. He's just <laughs> thing. Uh, it's like a little red creature and it's, christmas themed and the the creature has a plushie too so you can get that for your children or nieces or nephews or whatever instead of a uh, rudolph the red-nosed reindeer it's like look it's a little puff, puffy squig the squig's uh, name is bouncer bouncer yeah <laughs> uh kid, kids love creepy stuff like that so put this on the wish list you keep the you get the mini and give the uh plushy to an impressionable child or keep it for yourself or whatever floats your boat uh but yeah so check this cute cutie patootie out a bungalow glow says this is cute i'm not wrong i'm the talker of the cute thing so yeah this is I, true i give you permission to to squee and delight over this cuteness <laughs> uh all right moving on uh, a new book for D and D, Javion. Uh, are there there's some? We talked about your level love of turtles earlier. Yeah. Are there are other uh, creatures that are near and dear to your heart. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, owls. I I love owls. I love a lot of different kinds of um, animals, and I think that uh, Wizards of the Coast D and D in general is steering towards like turning animals into races. Like just pick, just like. Put them on a dartboard and then see what hits and then turn that into a race in D&D. Because with the newest uh, the Strixhaven book for D&D, um, you can play as an owlin. An owlin is an owl folk, an owl humanoid who studies at the university. I'm assuming this has some Harry Potter ties for, uh, <laughs> or, or, or origins or something like that, because that's the only other place I've seen owls important to um, like universities, like magic universities and things like that. Um, oh, but I'm I go back a long time with, cause like Merlin had an owl, you know? Oh, really? Uh, I didn't owls, know that. Owls have been associated, this is nerd, this is a tangent. Anyway, <laughs> owls are Please. one of the, um, one of the magical beasts that are protected by Athena. Athena, uh, so they have like great wisdom. And so owls Good have point. traditionally always been uh, uh, associated with like great wisdom and stuff like that. And like Merlin had an owl and stuff like that. So then JK Rowling was like, I see that. I see owls, they're associated with oh. great wisdom. And so then she put that in there, but it is, it, uh, JK Rowling didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. <laughs> okay, Whoa. good. Older mythology. <laughs> it's a with a history. 
history. Yeah. Thank there you. you go. Okay. No, so some no. wisdom right there. No, wisdom. Moving on. <laughs> so yeah, the Strixhaven book gives D and D players for fifth edition a chance to make characters who are students of the magical university of Strixhaven. So you can play through four different adventures, and each of them is self-contained, so you don't have to play them in order or anything like that. Or you can, if you want to do like one long uh, four campaign, four module spanning campaign. Um, and you get to choose which school you want to be in or which house in the school you want to be in. So um, if you don't know what the different houses are, I'll tell you the different Strixhaven University houses are as follows. The Lorehold house, which is all about archivists and historians. So if you like history, or like ancient knowledge and lore. Uh, there's also Prismari, which is all about artistic expression and creativity and personal expression. And as Bonsai pointed out, they're all theater kids <laughs> <laughs> expressing themselves through their art. Um, Quandrix, my favorite house, is all about math and numbers and <laughs> using, I don't, I don't know how they came up with it, but I love it. I really, I love probability. I love, I love, you know, like when I play a, like a board game or something like that, I figure out how many turns it'll take me before I, I run out of chances to pick up certain items and things like that, or how many, uh, what the probability is between somebody, you know, rolling the right number on their die for them to win, things like that. So I love Quandrix. That's the, that's the house I would go with. Um, Silver Quill is all um, slam poets. So all they do is they use their words, you know, like cutting words and they talk and, and they say things. And, and they know things and they use their 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 wit and their and their cunning. Um, Witherbloom is the last one is all about um, plants and animals and life in general. Um, so not just you know manipulating life by enhancing it or mutating it, but also bringing it back or getting rid of it. So yeah, th that Witherbloom is cool. also the goths. I think I would say. Oh yeah, definitely, oh, absolutely, yeah, like goths. <laughs> totally, that's totally. The one. That's my own. So, so, so you know which one I would go with, Quandrix uh, and Bonze. Which one did you say you would be if you had to? Pick Prismari. Prismari, of course. Yeah. Oh, what about you, Isabella? Witherbloom. Witherbloom? Oh, really? <laughs> I never would have guessed. This surprise. <laughs> what? <laughs> The undead, bringing uh, stuff back to life. Yeah. And Emma, what about you? I've been thinking about it since you brought it up. Because mm -hmm. uh, I've gone back and forth for a lot of them. I think I might actually go with Lorehold. You know, because it's not, it's not just the history. Because, like, uh, just saying it's history makes it sound maybe a little dry. But it's more sure. along the lines of, um, like, Indiana Jones, maybe without the culture appropriation, but right. you know, you're like seeing history firsthand. So it's not just necessarily being in the library, reading a lot of books, but like going out and experiencing, um, history. Yeah. Great. So you guys won't mind if I make a campaign using this book when it comes out and I put you guys in it. Yes. Just, yeah. Yes. Let's do it. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Okay, I will perfect. dress up for that. Just let me know so I can get my costume ready and we'll, <laughs> all out awesome perfect well there you go folks uh keep an eye out for the new strixhaven uh dnd &D book it's sure to be a hoot awesome and... <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, owl that's good yeah that's owl. good okay do you get it <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> all right uh so so bonsai um you you put on the tinfoil hat from time to time you spin out some wild theories um and sometimes we have to come back to that and 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 reassess what we've learned uh, so is there anything that you'd like to or, or dislike to share <laughs> sadly so a couple of weeks ago specifically october 15th edge <laughs> studios was announcing uh like they did an announcement about star wars tabletop rpg license and i um i we did the report and i m misinterpreted did, did, did what they were saying because it was very vague okay like you know when you're like oh they're gonna be we're gonna bring new things to the 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 you know uh star wars when some 
somebody says they're going to bring new things to Star Wars tabletop RPG, you're like, oh, new books, new modules, all that stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. no, they, they said, no, 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 no. They, they really was like, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 calm down. Calm down. We don't want Disney at us. Uh, so they're mm-hmm. not actually going to be printing any new modules. What they're going to be doing is reprinting some of the old ones and then adding supplements to it. Um, so they had to have this clarification because a lot of other people did misinterpret the facts. Cause this is a, they ended up discontinuing the prints of the old, uh, modules and also the dice that you have to use to play with it. Um, so that's why they were like, Oh, wait, wait, Hey, Hey, Hey. Uh, mm. so yeah, just so fantasy, uh, so fantasy, uh, flight star Wars, uh, isn't dead. Is it in, is it instant dead? It's coming back, but it's just not going to be new stuff. It's just reprints of the old stuff, uh, and maybe some new like edits to mm. it. That's 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 it. Uh, yeah. well, Bonsai, if <laughs> yes. you were going to make a new Star Wars book and you weren't ready to announce it yet, and people thought that you'd already announced it, what would you tell those people? Would you yes, tell them kidding. that it wasn't new? Would you I secretly guess, oh. be working on it the whole time? <laughs> are, are you saying I need to put my <laughs> back on and be like, yes, yeah. no, they're doing you got to double down, Bonsai. You got to be gotta like, double this down. Is they're tricking this us. is a mis- <laughs> misinterpretation. They're trying to, <laughs> no, but that'd deflect be uh, from deflect. The- they're like, oh, wait, actually, we're not ready to release it yet. JK, you said too much retracted. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we'll have to see, especially if it starts to pick up again, because, uh, you know, more and more people are getting into the Disney uh, Disney World and Disneyland Star Wars theme park. Maybe, maybe more people will be more interested in it. And then when they see the money, then new stuff comes out. Yeah. I will say too, fans are so rabid these days that just the sniff of a new thing and (laughs) they go wild and they're like, they might hear like five years from now, we might maybe sort of think of starting to work on a newish thing. And they'll be like, why don't I have it right now? Why don't I have it two days ago? So uh, even if they might someday work on something, I could see them wanting to keep that pretty close to the chest, uh, just so they don't have to deal with people demanding that it be done <laughs> instantly. Uh, but yeah, so that's, this is good to know specifically if you missed out on the star Wars, uh, RPG stuff, you will be able to get it. If you had trouble getting a hold of it, you should be able to get it now the stuff that did exist and maybe a module or something so yeah yeah awesome uh all right last but not least in our headlines we have some interesting kickstarter news isabella what do you what do you have for us for the on the kickstarter front yeah so i'm gonna make this really really quick because we don't have a lot of details actually about this but if you are interested in uh using kickstarter as a platform to fund your latest games or any kind of um, comic books or anything like that, that you want to do your short films or your feature films. Kickstarter has now added another level of pledging that is available for them. This is really cool. If you're not familiar, uh, which I won't assume that everybody is familiar about how Kickstarter works. um, Basically you have a a fund. um, So uh, everybody can kind of contribute and usually people contribute. It's like your great aunt, Anne, uh, your neighbor, your best friend from work, you know, everybody kind of like fits in. It's just like a little kind of small sort of a thing. Now, uh, Kickstarter is adding the forward funders, which allows organizations, um, uh, people, uh, organizations, nonprofits and foundations so that they can fund your Kickstarters as well, uh, which is, which will open up the opportunity for a lot more money to go into Kickstarters. Kickstarter had a record year this year, the most money that they've ever raised uh, in 2020, which was wild. Uh, Good on you. If you donated to a Kickstarter, I donated the most money to Kickstarter I ever have in any other year last year. Um, And so, yeah. 
And so this now will allow organizations. One of the things that I'm really surprised at is that Kodansha is actually one of the uh, companies that has signed up for this as well. Kodansha, if you're not familiar with them, they are the largest publisher of graphic novels and manga and comic books in Japan. Ooh. And they're one of the ones that have signed up for this to help fund uh, different creators. So what this is though, it's not the same sort of a thing as a regular Kickstarter where you're like, hey, it, you write an email and you're like, hey, it's me, Dan, remember me? We went to middle school together. I have a Kickstarter now. Can you please pledge for it? Instead, what you do is, is that you apply uh, for uh, this level of pledging and they will approve you or they will deny you just because of the fact that you apply for this level of funding does not mean that you're going to get into it. Uh, and then if the companies, the organizations and the nonprofits approve you, then they will make the investment into your project, uh, which could be anything from five to 10 percent. Um, and uh, that could be a huge amount of money and a good relationship to start also with these organizations as well. Um, so we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, if it means that that more people will get more money for their projects um, and uh, if this will wind up having any sort of like major repercussions with people getting their projects uh, in bigger leagues than just Kickstarter, you know, so yeah, we'll have to exciting. see. It is kind of exciting, actually. Yeah, because um, I think yeah. what it was before, and the stuff is like just hard to keep track of, but I think you had to be a person. Because one of the things, like retail has always been tricky for Kickstarter because a store, you can't, as a store, you can't back for like 50 copies of a game on right. Kickstarter. Right, you have right. to back at the retail level, which is like $5, and then you coordinate afterwards because Kickstarter has been pretty careful about keeping it at an individual funder yeah. level, probably for laws or regulations or something. This yeah. is a pretty, pretty big step for them. It'll be interesting to see, um, where it goes and yeah. the fact that they're supporting cool projects, you know, they're like bigger companies investing in or supporting, donating to smaller projects, right. like kickstarting <laughs> just like in the, in the title. Yeah. Um, Making some things of, succeed, yeah. A lot of big companies do want to fund uh, the the projects that they think are really cool, yeah. Um, and this gives them a pipeline for that as well. Um, uh, there are a lot of laws about how much a company can contribute and different kind of mm. donation rules and things like that. And so this yeah. is kind of a kind of a workaround. So I I think it's cool. I've seen so many people have their projects successfully funded, uh, and maybe you can get even bigger stuff funded through this. Uh, um, as well. So I think it sounds kind of cool. Um, I am supportive of anything that helps, uh, the little guy, um, with their projects. Um, yes. speaking of the little guy though, um, I'm crushing you all with my organizational power. That's right. I've seized the means of production oh. like Clara, and i am now the boss of all the bundles you're unworthy <laughs> unworthy of your bundle all of you lay <laughs> low beneath me and i'll be like what's what's my favorite line in uh, lord of the rings um they'll have a queen beautiful and fearsome <laughs> Remember she was like, uh, that's my favorite part. Of also it. love you and despair. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shall yeah. Love you and despair. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. My favorite. We gotta unionize now. Uh, we gotta unionize. Unionize <laughs> yourself. You gotta wanna hear the U word around me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the first humble bundle that we have is the Warhammer fantasy role play. Uh that's right. You guys know it, Warhammer. We all love it. You you know, that thing that we're all super into. Well, if you've been trying to get into Warhammer and you've never had an in to get into the huge world of Warhammer, this is actually a really cool bundle because now you can get a whole bunch of books. Um, there are four, 12, 24, and 50 item bundles. Uh, you can get at least 50 books for, uh, for around $30, which is crazy. So you can just dive deep into, uh, into 
the world of Warhammer. Um, and you could just never leave your house after this. You can just dive right into it and just cut off all connections with your family and friends. <laughs> um, uh, which, but also it helps uh, to um, support Water Aid America, which is a great organization uh, that helps with people and their access to clean, fresh water. So this is great. So if you're wanting to get into Warhammer, you can buy 50 books for $30, which is crazy. That's crazy. And also, uh, it goes to a good cause, which is great. Um, the next one that I have coming up is it's called new man, new man, which is a tabletop role playing game of exploration and discovery set a billion years in the future a billion years that's a, that's not a real number um <laughs> this game is easy and fun uh to learn how to play you've got 28 books that you can buy for 15 dollars, which is crazy uh the art on the cover looks really really wild um and you can dive deep into this one this one's also really cool uh this one gives uh you can also just lose yourself in the entire thing and i'm trying to read of where where is the charity information where is that charity information ah so this one supports children's miracle hospital children's miracle network hospitals um uh which is a really great organization um that helps children's hospitals all over the world so you can get 20 books for 15 dollars the next bundle of holding that I have is a Traveler Imperium tour. This is a science fiction tabletop role-playing book. Uh, if you're into uh, uh, this thing um, that I'm talking about right now, uh, the Facilime, <laughs> Facil, Facilim, Facim, Facim, Facilme, Fac Facsimile. 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 I know how to say it. <laughs> it's a fax. It's a fax. <laughs> um, um, so uh, if you're into classic traveler, I'm not even going to pretend to. Uh, no, you can check it out. It, it's from uh, the 80s. Um, it's a classic role playing game of science fiction. It looks very 80s science fiction. If you see the cover of these, I would highly suggest uh, checking these out. And a 10% of your payment goes to direct relief, which helps. Uh, pandemic related um, uh, charities as well. And uh, the next one that I have is the Deadlands Noir, which is a hard boiled fantasy savage worlds tabletop role play uh, based in the Big Easy. That's, that's New Orleans. Is that true? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just yeah. reading what, what's here. It is. Um, it's fantasy noir. Do you do you like hard boiled detective novels and a guy that says you're never gonna catch me alive? Cop a see. And so Deadlands Noir is like that. You can do your. Um, you can get your little trench coat and you can solve uh, crimes on the grim streets of 1930s New Orleans, uh, which is super cool. Uh, you can wear a fedora even. I won't. I won't hate on you for that. Uh, just this one. 10% um, of your payment goes to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, which is a great organization um, uh, that helps find and reunite children with their families all over the country. Uh, this one looks really cool. So check out Deadlands Noir for that as well. All right, you guys. Uh, I have decided then I'm tired of being the boss and I <laughs> instead would like to carry on my legacy uh, to a monarchy where you have even less, less freedoms. What? <laughs> oh, my freedom. <laughs> no, freedom. I've decided freedom. to turn this over freedom. to our new regent, uh, Javion. Oh, I wait, I have the perfect thing for this. Hold on. I'll be right back. No, where are you going? We, we have five minutes. <laughs> well, you should have thought of this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that look is at really that. Good. Very nice monarch cat. I appreciate that monarch cat. Ah, uh, yes, perfect. <laughs> okay, that's feel much better. much better now. <laughs> yes, this this feels right. All hail the monarch that is. <laughs> oh, gosh, I can't. Okay, oh, hello everybody. I hope you like Kickstarters because we got a bunch to talk about today. <laughs> All right, first up, Bonsai. Would you like to tell us about a Kickstarter that has uh, ooh. Ooh, something something sci-fi, perhaps? 
Yes. Ability is considered unnatural. It has about four days left ending Tuesday, November 9th. If you are really uh, into the Mothership RPG, this is a uh, supplement that you can play with uh, the Mothership RPG. Uh, it's a temple mind dungeon crawl with plasma wade wielding zealots. Uh, just um, if you guys don't know who, what Mothership is, it's a it's a multi war winning OSR like a, uh, a sci fi horror. RPG in the styles of like Alien, uh, you know that one, Javion. Uh, so <laughs> it's it's an eventual module set in a mining town where the miners go in, and they come out with unique abilities. So what they end up doing is kicking the corporation out and then making a cult in the mine. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you actually uh, play as the company man coming in to kick out all these cultists. Because the company's like, hey, we're we're not in this mine anymore. Then they have like weird powers coming out of it. So I need you to kick all the local miners out and then figure out what's going on. So uh if you're uh so if you're into that kind of like semi sci-fi horror, uh kind of like unworldly mystery with cultish uh you know tendencies uh this might be the game for you and like i said abilities considered unnatural the mothership module <laughs> this All right. art style well, reminds me a little of disc room for some reason it does. Or just the font or something anyways continue <laughs> uh, I've got three Kickstarters that I'm going to do in rapid succession. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, one is I have the Resident Evil board game. We talked about this one before when it was announced that it was going to be coming out. This one ends Thursday, November 11th, uh, which is coming up real soon. This one is based off of the first Resident Evil video game that came out on PlayStation. Um, and basically, it's a survival horror game uh, where you play as um, the the to uh chris renfield and um uh what's her name uh that other girl that's in resident evil Mila um, no <laughs> good try um uh jill valentine and chris renfield uh and you're stuck inside of the spencer mansion and uh you have to work together so that you can try to unravel the mystery of the spencer mansion what's inside of it spoiler alert it's zombies um and so you're kind of climbing through the house uh step by step and you don't know what's going to be behind doors it's the same kind of gameplay as the video game where you have puzzles that you have to try to solve and you have to get keys and stuff like that um um, but uh, you never know what's going to be behind a door um, uh, uh, as you go along. Uh, every You have to solve your resources. You have to catch herbs so that you can uh, heal yourself. It's just like a whole bunch of fun. So if you are um, uh, reminiscent of the first Resident Evil game, uh, this is very similar to that uh, as well. The next one that I have keeping up with my regular spoopy vibes is the SCP, the role-playing game, the Foundation Edition. Uh, this one is a role-playing game um, based off of the SCP. If you're not familiar with SCP, it is a, uh, it's a website that started on the internet, I think, God, like 10 years ago, which is really wild to think about um where people uh, users people human beings us um started to do this collaborative site where you could write in and you could say, okay, there's this mythical kind of creature and they're held inside of this containment center, this like uh, thing. And it was a collaborative uh, thing. And it's now expanded into like a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of video games. There's art. I think they're making a movie of it now. Um, and now there's a board game and the board game also has different kinds of stuff. And this is one of the uh, games. Uh, so I think that what you do is you play uh, as a researcher, security, or volunteers, which if you know the world of SCP, there's no such thing, um, uh, and an organization dedicated to protecting humanity from supernatural threats and unexplained phenomenon. Uh, so you have to go through uh, and explore the research facility, um, and uh, you'll probably die because everybody dies in SCP. That's just how it is. Uh, you have to deal with it. Um, this one ends Saturday, November 13. So if you're a big fan of SCP, or you like things like the X-Files or Stranger Things or things like that, then you'll probably also enjoy this as well. The last one that I have to talk about is called Exquisite Crime. This ends Tuesday, November 16th. This is a surrealist detective storytelling game where crime is an art and you are the artist, okay? 
Each player plays as a paranormal detective um, where you have to take turns describing your visions to another player who will draw what you're seeing inside of your visions. Um, this game is based off of the concept of the exquisite corpse, which is where artists will take turns adding to a different uh, collaborative artistic medium to it. Uh, this one though, is like, you're trying to solve a crime. One of you is a psychic medium. The other one is trying to transcribe and you're trying to figure out like what happened, the scene of the crime, who did it, how they did it and all this kind of stuff. This is a really cool game. It looks very Gothic, very spooky. Um, uh, also, you don't have to know how to draw. You can just do your best. This is all I ask. Um, and this is designed for two to four players in a single two to three hour session um and at the end of it you'll have a bunch of cool drawings or maybe not so cool maybe you just have the memories um this one ends tuesday november 16th Woo! i'm done Woo! thank you izzy you're welcome uh, speaking of cool things that you can make uh the next kickstarter that we have for you is called co-op uh this is a game that on the surface looks like a game where you are just building ikea furniture with somebody the uh, cooperative two-player game about um, pack, pack, unpacking and crafting or putting together IKEA furniture. But let me tell you something. This is not about building furniture. This is about relationships. It's a relationship-based game. You are communicating your needs to your building partner. You are uh, trying to earn not just love languages, but meatballs as victory points. <laughs> and uh, you are trying to try not to, to end up, you know, hating each other by the end of it. Uh, as, you know, anybody who has tried to put together IKEA furniture with someone can attest to. Um, this is a cooperative card game. So you get lots of cards and you're basically just trying to arrange these little hexes um, either on top of each other or next to one another with other cards in order to make everything fit together so that not only do you put the furniture together, but both you and your um, building partner's needs are being met. As long as you're communicating them well, you should have no problem with that. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw out there, I love putting together Ikea furniture. Yeah. Uh, it, it does not stress me out. I've felt anyone who I've ever done it with, I felt like it's been a positive experience. I don't know who these people are who just get so mad at it and like lose pieces and just, I'm like, it's, it's like putting together a giant puzzle. It's like a giant game, you know, like a giant <laughs> yeah. escape room or something that you figure it out. And then you have a piece of furniture at the end of it. So. I, I agree. I love just an instruction book, like and in following the rules to a T and right? then just getting right? it right. We, I back the game, Emma. <laughs> so we're going to play it together. We're going to awesome. be the best team of Ikea furniture builders ever. I'm saying, um, but until it comes out, you can try it for free on Tabletopia. Um, this Kickstarter ends in 26 days. So you got plenty of time, but it's already fully funded. So don't worry if you're wondering about whether or not you are going to get your copy because it is already funded. Okay, next up, we've got some really cool stuff to show you. Um, I don't know if any of you are 3D printers out there, but there's a Kickstarter for some possibly cool dice towers. I say possibly cool, not because I'm very opinionated, <laughs> but because the people who made this Kickstarter decided to call it themselves possibly cool. So this is their second Kickstarter and they are showing off some dice towers that look amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they've got a witch's brew where you toss it into a witch's potion and it comes out and you see if you rolled the right dice that you want. They've got towers of dragons and uh, wilderness based ones. I think there's even like a couple of skulls you can drop your dice into that are really cool. But it's not just dice towers. There's also very classy coasters, and I know a thing or two about class, as you can see. Um, I, I also, I love coasters. Uh, anybody who's been to my apartment knows that I have tons of fun coasters, like this dice coaster where you, <laughs> you hold some dice in it. Uh, it's really cool. So when I say that these uh, these coasters look really cool, you can you can trust you can trust and believe that I know I know a thing or two about the standard of coaster. <laughs> um, oh, and also dice cases, um, places to keep your dice and carry them with you. I don't know if you have um, a lot of dice. I, I'm sure uh, you have plenty enough if you play D and D like I do. <laughs> so um, if you're like me, you need a place to put those dice. And um, the possibly cool dice towers Kickstarter um, gives you. Uh, some files that you can use to download and print out, 3D print 
um, your own dice tower. So after you've backed them, they send the files to you. So it's a lot more secure of a backing project. So this one has 21 days left. Um, it's already fully funded and it's, it's, hitting, it's hitting its stretch goals and going further and further beyond. Definitely check this one out if you want some cool uh, dice related stuff. Who doesn't, right? Okay, um, and then last but absolutely not least, we have uh, a Kickstarter that gives you a second edition of a really amazing board game that I love that I'm gonna show you and a new board game. Uh, sorry, I believe, is it a board game or is it an expansion? I'm not sure. I think it's a new board game altogether. It's two games, it's two games. Um, so Circadians, First Light, first came out uh, a couple years ago, actually. And uh, I have it right here, actually. I have the first edition because I love Ooh. it so much. And as you can see, uh, the point of the game is that you are trying to come to this new planet um, via the Circadians, which is the company that employs you. And you roll a bunch of dice and you place them down and you collect a bunch of stuff and you spend that with the aliens of the native planet and you work together to try to get your company lots of money instead of just taking everything that you want, which I think is much better than just, you know, colonizing or something crazy like that. And the second edition comes with updated art um, and the uh, newest uh, version of the game, Chaos Order, is coming out. And I'm so excited because I love, love, love this game. It has all the things that I love. It's got dice. It got upgrades and lots and lots of stuff to collect. You can get some algae, some water, red mysterious crystals, lightning bolts. I mean, what more could you ask for? Check out this um, this new Kickstarter. Uh, if, if you don't want to get the first edition, and like me, if you already have the first edition, you definitely want to get the second edition. It comes, it comes with a lot of updated rules and art and components that look really, really cool. It's got six days left. Um, so um, make sure you check it out. It's already fully funded. I mean, it, it, I know how much people out here love their sci-fi board games, okay? There's so many out there, but this is one that you want to keep your eye on. Please check it out if, you, if you're into like worker placement or you know, more complex board games. It's really, really fun. And that is going to end the reign of the Kickstarter region. Thank you so much for having me. Thank if, you. if all regencies ended with thank you so much for having, for having me, me. <laughs> no, right? like i've done what i came here to do we're, good. we're all is, taken care of that was the fall of the roman empire it was yeah. caesar saying thank you so much for having me <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe you'll so see me and maybe i'll grace you with my presence once more <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's about it. That's about all that we have for Table Takes today. Uh, but Table Takes is not the only show that we have here on Gen Con TV. So if you're looking for more stuff to watch on Mondays at 6 p.m. and these are all Pacific time, we have Board Games with Brothers Mirth, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. This game gets dicey. And Fridays, of course, you have us here uh, 2 p.m. for Table Takes. Remember to follow, subscribe, turn on notifications if you like this show. If you miss the show, you can find most of the streams on YouTube just one day later. We also have a Discord, so if you want to connect with other Gen Con fans, you can do that in our Discord. And we have linky buttons in the chat that might appear if I wave my hands enough. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Uh, thank you, Bonsai, Isabella, and Javion for hosting today. It has been lovely spending this time with you. Uh, and I believe that we're going to maybe raid someone if they're still there. Uh, our tech can maybe confirm raiding playing board games. I posted in the thing. So press the button. Uh, but until, yeah, it's going. The raid. Cool. We're doing it. Uh, until then, until next week. Bye. Bye for now. And thanks for joining us. And have a lovely rest of your day and weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.